Are you on a DevOps journey right now? Maybe an SRE journey? Probably one of the biggest things that you're hearing about daily, constantly, it's probably getting a little bit annoying at this point, is automation. But really, when we're talking about automation from a DevOps and SRE perspective, we're talking about repeatability, especially when it comes to systems, services in the cloud, servers, virtualization, all of that good stuff. And one thing, well, there's a lot of things, but one platform, one tool that helps out a ton with this is HashiCorp's Terraform. And HashiCorp's Terraform is probably the hottest infrastructure as code tool right now, not just because of popularity or because of some buzz, but it's almost like literally every organization is using it when it comes to infrastructure as code. Now, if you don't know me, my name is Michael Levan. I'm a seasoned engineer and consultant from an SRE and DevOps perspective. I'm also a content creator. I've written several books, I've created several courses, and I'm a HashiCorp ambassador, and I was awarded that for my work with Terraform. So what I'm gonna be doing for the next four weeks, once a week, is a completely 100% free Terraform course called Terraform for Everyone. And we're gonna be going through what Terraform is, the logic behind it, why we want to use it, what infrastructure as code is. We're going to be diving into real world code examples. We're going to be building a project in the cloud. And ultimately what we want to be able to do at the end of this four week free course is ensure that you can get out into the world, whether you're working in a startup, a medium sized organization, a large organization, whether you're consulting or whether you just want to learn. What we want to do is at the end of this course, we're going to be able to get you out there and become hands-on and proficient in writing Terraform code. So with that, let's go ahead and dive right into the first lesson here. I'm super excited about this. And we're gonna see a little bit of Terraform code, but we're not gonna go too much into it. We don't wanna, you know, get too crazy the first week. And then we're gonna dive into a little bit of a lecture and kind of see exactly all the components of Terraform. So let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, everybody, so first things first, let's go ahead and look at some code. So I'm gonna actually close out of these tabs here, and what I wanna show first is this directory. So I have a directory here, and it's called S3 hyphen bucket. That should maybe uh, give you an idea what, what the code's gonna be here. It's gonna be an S3 bucket in AWS. Now, this is a directory. However, in Terraform, this could be considered a module now it's funny right but if you think about it it actually kind of makes sense if you come from like a development background for example and maybe you've you know written some python code and then you would go and you would import that python code it would be a library or a module but realistically that code is sitting in a directory and you're importing the directory to be able to access all of the code underneath and that's exactly what terraform is doing now the reason why is because HCL, which is HashiCorp configuration language, which is what Terraform is written in, it is considered a functional programming language. Now what I would do wanna say is, and you're gonna see this throughout the course, you know, loops and different logic, things like that, it's definitely watered down. Like you're not gonna have as much availability as you would in like Go or Python or something like that, but it is there and you know, it does exist. So this is our module. Now inside of our module, you can have several files in here, but the two main ones are gonna be your main.tf and your variables.tf. And we're gonna also talk about a different type of file here as well in just a second. So first things first, I'm gonna open up main.tf. When we look at main.tf, we start off with a provider. Now the provider, think about the provider like an API call. It's literally what it is. So there's several different providers. I've personally written providers and contributed to providers. All providers are written in Go or Golang, which is a programming language. And what these providers essentially contain are API calls. So you have a client API, and then the provider can interact with the client API to interact with all the different services available, whether it's an application, whether it's a cloud service, as long as the API endpoints are public, you can reach them with a provider using Terraform. 
So as you can see here, I have a little definition. Each resource type is implemented by a provider, which is a plugin for Terraform that offers a collection of resource types. That's the high level. What I explained before about the client API and API calls and all that, that's definitely a little bit more in depth. So the provider here that I'm using is AWS. Now providers may require required parameters and those required parameters are set up just like you see here in a key value pair format. Okay, so the key is region and then the value is US East one. Now, if you look here on line seven, there's a resource block and a resource block declares a resource of a given type. So for example, we have the resource AWS S3 bucket. Now that is a type coming from the AWS provider. And if you dive into it a little bit, it's actually a go file with all of the code inside of it. So if you look at the AWS provider on GitHub, you'll literally see a file. I think it'll be called resource underscore AWS underscore S3 underscore bucket. And then inside of there is the code that's actually being used to create these resources using Terraform. So as you can see here, resource names and values, these are the key value pair, same thing we just spoke about. So you have bucket, that's the key, and then Terraform S3 bucket, that's the value. So you have those key value pairs, very much like you would in programming. Okay, and then you have some blocks here. So we have a block that's for versioning, and it's enabled equals true. And then you have some server side encryption stuff here. Now I don't want you to get too caught up on all this stuff happening from lines 12 down. What I really want you to think about is the provider and then the resource, okay? So when we think about how can we make this repeatable, how can we not hard code stuff? Again, same thing like if you're in a development environment, if you've been a programmer before, a software developer, you're gonna notice that you're gonna be thinking about Terraform as a developer. Now, don't think this is scary, it is not. I promise you, you don't need to have a computer science degree. You don't need to have 10 years of programming. But what you should do is think about things outside of the box. If you've been a systems administrator or systems engineer and you haven't really written too much code, maybe think about it like a developer. Think about, you know, well, if I'm creating this program, how can I make it repeatable? All right, so we are here at the PowerPoint, and once again, I'd like to welcome you to the Terraform for Everyone free course. And for this lecture, it's just gonna be getting into the weeds. We're gonna be seeing what's going on with Terraform. Okay, so infrastructure is what? <laughs> what is this? Infrastructure is code. So you may hear it as IaaS, uh, IAC, infrastructure as code. So really what it's meant to do is to create, update, delete, and replace, or CRUD operations really, systems and services. So virtual machines, Lambda functions, serverless stuff, container stuff, anything, you know, systems, right? Systems can be anything. It could be containers, it could be Lambda functions, serverless stuff, it could be virtual machines. So infrastructure as code is to create, replace, update, delete systems. Okay, so instead of these manual tasks that we have to do pretty much all the time, so we're always stuck doing, you know, go to the UI, click here, click there, yada, yada, do this thing over and over again every single day when we get to our desk. Instead of having to do all of these things manually, we can do it automatically. So let me give you an example here. Let's say you got to spin up 10 virtual machines. So you got to Go to a UI in the cloud or an ESXi or in Hyper-V, wherever your systems are. You gotta, you know, type in some stuff, click next, 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 wait for the system to come up. Then you gotta do it all over again. Not only is it boring, but it's not an efficient use of your time as an engineer. You should be thinking about how to make things better. You should be thinking about creating new things, building, not just, you know, aimlessly clicking next, next, next through some UI somewhere. So really what we're talking about is turning our manual tasks into automated tasks. And you never wanna settle for anything that is not repeatable. So a virtual machine, clicking next, next, next through a UI, you can't just do that every single day. You're never gonna to get to the good, fun stuff. You're just gonna be clicking next all the time. So you wanna be able to make sure that all of your tasks are repeatable. 
So now I want to talk about data types. Now, if you're new to programming, new to development, data types are the resources that you create. So strings are just, you know, one word or multiple words inside of quotes. A number is like an integer. It's, it's again, if you're familiar with programming and stuff, it's typically called an int, but in Terraform it's called a number. Again, it's literally a number 50, 64, two numbers. Then you have a Boolean. So Booleans are true, false. Okay. And then you have a list or a tuple. So really what a list is, is it's a bracket square bracket. Okay. And then you have different pieces of information in there in double quotes. So really what it is, is it's strings inside of brackets, square brackets. Okay. And then inside of there, you know, you have maybe a list of three strings and it could be one, two, three. And those values are comma separated. So double quote inside of the double quote is a one. Okay. So the word one and then a comma. And then again, more double quotes, two comma, double quotes, three. That's a list. And then finally we have a map and a map is a key value pair. So for example, remember how we saw, you know, bucket was the key and then the value was the variable or the hard coded value in there. Key value pairs, that's what maps are. Maps are a key value pair. Now, if you're familiar with like Python, for example, you may know these as dictionaries. And then finally, I wanna talk about immutable versus mutable. Now this is a very <laughs> interesting conversation and topic in infrastructure as code. So when we think about like configuration management, like Ansible, for example, it's mutable. So it can be changed after it's created. The values can be changed after it's created. For example, let's say you use Ansible to install MySQL and you install MySQL version 5.7. And then you say, ah, you know what? I want to install MySQL version 5.8. You can do that. You know, it could change. It's perfectly fine. If you have something that's immutable, which is what Terraform is by default, it is immutable. It cannot be changed after it's created. Now here's the kicker. <laughs> There are certain resources with Terraform that are kind of mutable. So for example, there are some services in AWS and Azure, etc., that the API allows it to be mutable. And because of that, Terraform acts in that way. Now, again, by nature, Terraform is immutable. So for example, if you have a virtual machine, and you want to create it with Terraform. And then later on you say, oh, I want to change the, the host name. It'll recreate a new virtual machine for you instead of just updating it. That's the difference between immutable and mutable. Mutable, it would just go in, change the name and that's it. And everything would stay as is. Immutable, the virtual machine says, oh, you want a new name? I guess you want a brand new virtual machine. It'll delete the old one, create a new one. And finally, what I want to do here is I want to show just two web pages. So the first is Terraform Arithmetic and Logical Operators. So operators in Terraform. And you're going to see things, you know, like multiplication and plus and minus, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, etc. So here are the arithmetic operators. So you have plus, minus, multiplication, division, percentage or the remainder, division, and then negative numbers. So it could return a negative result. Okay, next you have equality operators. So equal, equal, equals true, not equal, equals. And then you have equality operators. So for example, you have equals, equals, okay, which just means equals, or you have not equals. So whenever you see an exclamation mark equals, that means it does not equal that result. And then you have some comparison operators. So true, false, et cetera, right here. And you have logical operators. Okay. So what I would recommend is this is super crucial. Go ahead and check this out. And then finally the Terraform registry. So this is something that I think is really, really cool. The Terraform registry is where all of those providers exist. So you have things like AWS, Kubernetes, Alibaba cloud, Azure, GCP. And then the really cool thing is you also have providers that aren't official, right? That really means that they're not verified. So let's go ahead and take a look at community. Okay. So as you can see, 
These are just people that are creating providers. You could literally go and create a provider right now and put it up in, you know, the community providers registry, which is really awesome. So like there's one here that was created for one password. There's one here that was created for Active Directory. And then I just refresh the page here and you can see, you know, there are a bunch more stuff for Postgres, OpenStack, et cetera, all the official ones and verified here. So a lot, you'll see, you know, AWS, Kubernetes, Cloudflare, which is really cool, Datadog, GitHub. So as you can see, there is a bunch of stuff that you can do with Kubernetes and not just creating systems, which is awesome. So with that, we'll go ahead and wrap up week one. I hope that you enjoyed the first week of Terraform for everybody, free course on YouTube. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to share it with your friends. I'd like to get as many people in here as possible to be able to reap the rewards of infrastructure as code in Terraform. So with that, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And we'll see you next week to talk about some code examples and some modules. Thanks, everybody.